After getting a newly designed game controller for one of my all-time favorite consoles, I decided to go back through my gaming library and find the games that I love, and some that I didn't give enough time to. I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I show you a Dreamcast Showcase. Second Opinion Games when the Dreamcast launched, winter was coming up pretty fast. And what better way to get people excited for the new season change than by playing a little bit of Rippin' Riders snowboarding. This really showed off what next-gen graphics was going to be like and was an excellent showcase for the power of the Dreamcast. There is some high-quality music going on in the background, sometimes gets you amped up, and other times just puts you in a tranquil state. There's also an announcer that isn't too annoying. He basically just does his job, setting you up for some sweet jumps and lets you know when you reach a checkpoint. Rippin' Riders has a somewhat familiar cast of characters, and that's probably because it's part of the Cool Borders series, but without the name. That series mostly stayed on the PlayStation 1, but did graduate very briefly to the PlayStation 2 before SSX just put it right out of business. And that's probably my biggest problem with this game. It doesn't play like SSX does. It's really its own thing. It's probably why I didn't give it too much of a chance, but if I did, I would be exploring the this terrific mountain that's full of obstacles to dodge and sheep to say hello to. My biggest problem with the entire game is it just doesn't go full crazy with the trick system and there's not a whole lot of rails to grind on and do tons of flips off of. Also, the mountain doesn't seem super darn steep. Even if there are places that you could build up speed, you never get that massive rush of adrenaline. Even though the graphics look beautiful, I much rather be grinding on rails and doing some fun tricks. So I guess I have to turn to... Jet Grind Radio! That's right, the game that allows you to grind on nearly everything. Also, doing tricks is just as easy as just pressing a button to jump really high and doing a backflip, so that's no problem. You have to square off against a couple of kids in order to add them onto your team, but it never really seems too darn difficult. Mostly, this game just chewed up your thumbs because you have to spray paint everything by rotating the stick around in crazy circles and if you fail well then you don't spray paint the thing and you also have to pick up spray paint along the way there's also some of the most hardcore police that have ever been put in video games they'll sick an attack helicopter on a couple kids spray painting graffiti everywhere and fire missiles on them yeah that's a little bit over the top and that's really what this game's all about it also has one of the best soundtracks that have ever been put in a video game to this very day so feel free to play the audio in your car stereo just to show how hip you are with the kids by playing music from 20 years ago that still sounds fresh and new. And playing this game again with my new controller feels amazing. This time around, my thumb isn't ripped to shreds like it was way back in the day, and the learning curve doesn't really seem that bad. But what really made this game stand out was the cell-shaded graphics. This is the first time it really became mainstream, and boy did people ever take notice. That's probably why it's still being used rather heavily to this day. But I just had to find out what else the Dreamcast can do with cell shaded graphics. Wacky Racers is a great example of cell shaded done right. After all, it's based off of a cartoon series that jumps back all the way to the 1970s. So the art style is rather unique, and the cell shading definitely fits the cartoon feel of the game. Now you could choose whether or not you want it to race like a real car, or more like a kart racer, which I strongly recommend taking the kart racer aspect. Now when you start a game, you can map your power-ups to different buttons 
things on the controller, which means you're not picking up random item blocks when you're driving around. Instead, you're picking up coins that you will spend to buy the power-ups that you want. Do you want to spend it all on boost, or do you want to fire your machine guns off and take out people in front of you? The choice is up to you, and that means there's some really deep gameplay in what should be a really shallow experience. And also, the game is just fun through and through, but it really never gives you the hardcore sense of speed that you might really want from a racing game. So then I guess we have to turn to... Hey, what's going on? Okay, with only a few miles to go to the finish line, the drivers give it all they've got. Yeah, yeah you are gonna get it. Star Wars Episode I Racer definitely brings all the speed that you could handle. And just when you can't handle any more, you'll find out it's just the beginning. Because after you start winning some races, you're going to earn credits that you could upgrade your pod racer itself. So you could even increase your speed even more, or you can invest some money in some brakes, which you're definitely going to need because one wrong decision could have you blowing up into the side of a mountain, which is going to happen quite a bit. Luckily, you don't lose the parts that you spent your hard-earned money on, even if you did disintegrate into little tiny chunks. It also brings all of the best music from Star Wars right into your home, and you know what? It fits great in a racing environment. And let's face it, Star Wars Episode One Racer is probably the best thing to come out of the prequels. I am amazed that they didn't invest more money in some more pod racing games, and I would definitely love to play one to this very day. But because this seemed to be something that was made just to sell toys, well, I feel like I have to play with some toys now. So that means I'm gonna have to turn to... Revolt is an RC car racer that really controls like RC cars. I was just playing with a remote control car earlier today, and I found that this game's controls is almost exactly like it, which is also one of my biggest problems with the game. The fact that you could oversteer quite often and spin out can definitely send you from first to last place quickly and never ever recover. Luckily, there's some items that have been strewn across the map that you can pick up and they seem very RC car appropriate, like firing bar rockets off or turning your machine into a ticking time bomb, which eventually will allow you to explode all over everything. Well, I guess they're not that appropriate. Also, the graphics look beautiful, and exploring these different environments, like your just everyday neighborhood, or even a mall, is perfect for the RC car experience. It's also played online to this very day, so if you can figure out how to do it and get into the right community, well then you can have a blast playing this one. And seeing that it makes me feel like a kid and makes me want to play with toys even more, it brings us to our next game. Toy Commander is one of the best games about kids playing with their toys that have ever been made. And seeing that it comes from a mind of a child means that the rules are just thrown out the window. So you could drive your truck up walls and just try to get to some candy. Or maybe you want to take your airplane around and just explore. Or use a helicopter to drop sugar into a coffee cup. Or jump into a tank and just shoot the heck out of the family cat. Because let's face it, that cat freaking deserves to die and I just will blow it up with my freaking tank. Oh yeah, this is great. 
And one of the things I really loved was exploring other people's homes, trying to find what secrets they were hiding, and finding knives out everywhere when I was a child was pretty darn amazing. And that's really the feeling I get when I play this game. Like a kid exploring someone else's home for the very first time, and driving my toys everywhere, and getting into all different types of mischief. If you play this game long enough, you'll end up flooding the entire house, and that gets really hilarious as then you have to you know what I'll just let you guys play and figure it out for yourselves so now that I feel like a kid again I just want to play some of the video games that I played when I was a kid so then I guess I have to play Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. That's right, the original ball gobbler, Miss Pac-Man herself, wearing just boots, a bow tie, and a smile. And the game developers had to have known that people would fall in love with Miss Pac-Man because they made it able to be played one-handed. Now it makes you feel a little like the old style Pac-Man because there's different mazes to run around and pick up different balls to gobble. And you could even eat the power pellets and devour the ghosts who seem to be very very much uninterested in your even existence. So they just kind of do their own thing and you do yours. It's all about how to get to the finish line and eating a whole lot of balls in this game. And she's not very talkative either. Matter of fact, this weird professor that seems to walk you through the game seems to do most of the talking. Now there's explosives around the corner, which allows you to blow up different blocks. And there's speeders that make you do crazy jumps and knock over pillars and make different platforms platformers and this game is pretty much just a puzzle platformer even though it's only played one-handed it's simple easy to pick up and hard to put down and the graphics look beautiful playing it on the dreamcast of course you could always pick it up on the playstation one but i'm telling you it's not nearly as enjoyable and it definitely makes me feel like playing more arcade games for the dreamcast itself so then i guess we gotta take a look at Centipede. At the start of the game, there's an opening cutscene, which I didn't think was in English at first, and then I found out that they just completely destroyed the audio for this, and it's just unlistenable. So I jumped right into the game, thinking that it was going to be crap right away, and then I found out that it controls really well. Your ship moves quite fast, shooting is just as easy as holding down the fire button, and scrafing back and forth is just as easy as pressing the left and right triggers, and you could even pick up different power-ups as you play through the game, like a beetle shell that lets you take a couple of hits, and a spread shot that lets you destroy enemies really fast. There's the mushrooms that are all here, and the centipedes themselves. Killing the spiders are, isn't too darn annoying, and saving other little guys is kind of cool. The sound effects are where the game really shines. It ends up sounding very retro without being annoying, and definitely makes you remember the old centipede experience from your youth. Also, the game levels seem to branch out and seems like one of the best ways to reboot your series for new players. Centipede is just retro done right, but it feels a little bit shallow. I want something a little bit more deeper as I blast everything into tiny bits. Andromeda will not disappoint you. At first glance, it looks like a common overhead shooter, but what you don't realize is that it's an open world overhead shooter where you can blast off from your home planet and jump through space itself to find more missions. And there are crap tons of missions. The game itself feels like it never ends. You could grind to level up and also buy more parts to your ship and even refuel your ship at your home planet. It. You could also pick what faction of alien you want to be or just stick with the humans themselves because they seem to be the most relatable. As far as gameplay wise, it is 
unbelievably huge and will have you playing probably for the rest of your life if you want to see everything that this game has to offer. And that feels maybe a little bit too deep for me and also keeps me sucked in as I continuously find more missions and more parts to upgrade my ship, find more friends to help me battle the evil aliens, and then makes me want to start a whole new game and pick different characters from the very beginning and go through the whole thing all over again. So yes, it's one of the best games on the Dreamcast, but just has me wanting to shoot more stuff. So then I got to turn to... Fur Fighters. Now, when I first played this game, it was on one of those demo discs that the Dreamcast was kind of known for, and it seemed kind of fun with somewhat awkward controls. After all, the Dreamcast doesn't have two analog sticks, so you have to use your face buttons to aim, and I re never really liked that a whole heck of a lot, even if I was doing it a lot in other games like Quake and Unreal Tournament. For Fur Fighters, it didn't seem that right. Also, the story was really generic. You're just some freedom fighters fighting against an evil empire. So when I actually got the game and started playing it, I found that it was a lot more fun than I originally thought. You have different characters to play through as, and each one has their own abilities. Luckily, there's always a pod around the corner that tell you sort of what character you want to turn into to use their abilities. After all, there's a penguin that can dive through water, and a kangaroo that can jump really high. The dog lets you burrow underneath things, and the cat can climb really well. So each of the characters has their own abilities that just has you push a little bit farther into the game, and also shooting stuff is a lot of fun. I personally like the shotgun, and when you see a window, don't think you're safe, because you could always blast through it, and your enemies can blast through it and kill you quite dead. Fur Fighters is a damn good game when you give it a chance, but it feels like it's a little too cutesy for me. I want something a little bit darker. The Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver. From the very beginning of this game, you're introduced to your main character, Raziel, as he gets tossed into a pit, being destroyed from his vampire form and transformed into a Soul Reaver. Now you're on a revenge mission to track down all your former brethren and suck their souls dry. So because you're mostly hunting down vampires, it's not as easy as just tearing them limb from limb. You're going to have to think a little outside the box, such as impaling them, or catching them on fire, throwing them in the sunlight, or dunking them in water, which will make their skin dissolve. Also, water tends to make you dissolve into your uncorporeal form, so then you're going to have to devour more souls and get back to another section where you can go back to the real world. So dying never really sends you back too far. There's also some transporters that can jump you around this massive open world. The storyline is really gothic and dark and finding human levels is unbelievably hard. I played through and beat this entire game and never came across a human city until later I looked through a guidebook and found out there was so much more of this game that I completely missed. And that's one of the the best parts about this game that you could come back to it again and again and find more things that you didn't even know were there and because the game is so big and it's dark with tons of different puzzle elements to it it certainly makes it one of the best dreamcast games that not many people have played and because it's just a part of a much grander story most people just don't want to put the time in and go back to it but those people are wrong because this is definitely one of the best Dreamcast games but of course that's just my opinion thanks for watching
So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it. Soul Reaver really is one of the best games for the system, and Jet Grind Radio really was tearing my thumbs apart before I got this new controller. So if you don't have one of these, certainly pick it up. It breathes new life into an old console, and it has me playing through some of the games that I've just had on my shelf and never really put that much time into. So I want to know, what are your favorite Dreamcast games? Did I already cover them today? or did I cover them in my Hidden Gems video, which I strongly recommend you also give a watch. And if I didn't tell you about any of the best Dreamcast games, well, then you're going to have to let me know in the comment box down below. So until later, I will see you again, guys.